And I had breakfast in Dubai Harbor on a houseboat made in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. They are now importing houseboats all over the world from this company right here. Another good example is down in western Kentucky. You all may have heard that the Asian carp have sort of invaded the waters down at Kentucky Lake, Lake Barkley, and it, they, they eat up their huge fish, and they eat up a lot of the plant food that other fish need to survive. And it was hurting our fishing industry. We have now, working with two startup companies, created two companies in western Kentucky who are paying our fishermen to catch Asian carp. They're fast freezing them, and they're shipping them to Asia for food. So we're solving two problems. One, we're getting rid of, of a species that we don't need, and two, we're feeding people in other parts of the world. That's what exporting can be about. And that's what each one of our companies is looking more and more to do. And these are small companies. You can do this with your company of two people, five people, ten people, if you locate the right markets, and we've been there to do that. You know, all of this progress isn't by accident. It's because there's been a lot of careful planning and a lot of cooperation in bringing this about. We've done several things. We overhauled all of our economic incentive tools to increase focus on existing business and to increase the wages that our businesses pay. We created a program to help our auto manufacturers and therefore our over 460 auto suppliers in this state. Some of you may not know, we're now the third largest producer of cars and light trucks in the United States. Detroit's first. Ohio is second, but we're so close to them that we're on their rear bumper. And we're going to catch them and overtake them before too long. I mentioned the export initiative that we did. We went on trade missions. We've aggressively pursued international investors and international companies and, and have been successful in bringing them to the Commonwealth. We've nurtured high-tech startups by the, creating the Kentucky Innovation Network and the the Office of Entrepreneurship. We help small business by creating new financing programs and tax credits. We created the Angel Investor Network, and we began work on what I call our farm team. We created the Governor's School for Entrepreneurs. Now, many of you have heard, I'm sure, of the Governor's Scholars Program, the Governor's School for the Arts, where we take juniors and seniors out of our high schools and and they come together for an intensive three-week program in the summer to, to really boost their skills and, and challenge them and, and, and make them strive to be even better than they are. Well, we're doing this also with high school kids all over the state for a three-week three, uh, period in entrepreneurship. And you know the kids that are selected aren't always the top grade getter in, in their class. They are kids that have demonstrated that ability to kind of think outside the box, to come up with new ideas, that kind of dream and, and, and think about things that, that aren't yet but could be. And we're bringing them together and really encouraging them in that regard because let me tell you something. One of these days in the not-too-distant future, one of those kids will start the next Google, and it'll start right here in the Commonwealth. Because that's where a lot of the future is, is in the entrepreneurship area. So we have concentrated on all of those things to make sure that we end up with a workforce here that employers can't wait to hire. And that is the most important thing for the future of this Commonwealth, is an educated, highly skilled, highly trained, healthy, and drug-free workforce. And we've got to concentrate on that. We've worked hard on the drug problem, and we're going to continue to work hard to try to get our arms around that and to corral that as much as we can because we need productive citizens. We're working hard to try to make sure that every single Kentuckian has access to affordable health care. Why? Because individually it's great for their lives. Economically, it is great for the Commonwealth of Kentucky because every CEO will tell you that I need a productive workforce in order to be successful, and my workforce can't be productive if it's not healthy. 
If they're at home all the time, taking off sick, having to take care of their kids who are sick, they're not on the job, and I won't have the kind of workforce I need. So those are the things that we strive to do every day. And all of this is a result not just of Steve Bashir, It's a result of all of you. If we weren't all working together to make these things happen, they wouldn't be happening. Let me tell you something. There are some communities that I know that tend to fuss and fight a lot, don't get along very well. Those are the communities that are not doing very well. The communities that are advancing and moving ahead and progressing are, are the communities that come together, put their differences aside, put the politics aside, and just make sure that everybody gets on the same page to move their community forward. That's what you all are doing in this area. Very proud of you, and you ought to be very proud of yourself. Now, one last thing. I'm not here to spike the football in the end zone or to cut down the nets and go home and say the game's over because the game's not over. But we still got a lot of work to do. The job isn't finished. We still have some communities and some folks who aren't economically where they need to be in order to be successful. And so we're going to continue this hard work, and we got to build on this work in order to make sure that every single Kentuckian gets the chance to enjoy success uh, and the fruits of all of the labor that all of us are doing right now. But I can tell you, by any measure, you pick out any measure, Kentucky has got a tremendous amount of momentum going. And you know what? We got a big silver trophy to prove it. Thank you all very much.